So this time around, rather than building uh, something that's, you know, like a completed cool little product, uh, I think I want to build something that's going to be a component that I might use for some future uh, project ideas. And uh, namely, that's a motorized potentiometer. Uh, so what is a potentiometer? Looks like this, and it's basically a uh, variable resistor. It's got a little knob that you can turn, and as you turn that, the resistance between uh, the middle terminal and either of the outer terminals uh, goes up or down. You'll often see this as like the volume knob on an audio system or something like that. Although between you and me, a lot of that stuff is digital now and they're just using some kind of encoder or something like that instead of an actual potentiometer. But despite that, analog electronics is still an important field. It still gets used all the time, okay? And anyway, what I wanna do is to take this analog component and be able to adjust it digitally using a microcontroller. And yeah, I know that there already are uh, digital resistors you can buy. I've actually used that in a previous project, but um, what that is is a thing that uh, has no physical component to it. It's just an IC, and you send it signals, and it changes the resistance value, and you plug it into your circuit, and they work pretty well. I mean, I don't have any. I didn't have any complaints about it. But like I mentioned, the difference is that there is no physical component. And uh, that doesn't really do what I want it to do. I want to have something that still has a physical knob that the user could turn uh, to manually adjust if they wanted. Uh, and then we could save the position that they turned it to, recall that later, or just set some other position that you want to send the potentiometer to. And if you wanted to do that with a digital resistor that you can go online and buy, then uh, you'd have to use like an encoder or something to have the physical part you turn. And then I imagine you'd probably need to put up some kind of digital display that tells you what value it is. So instead of going that path, I'm just gonna come up with my own thing that uses the real potentiometer. So I think the first part of the design is pretty obvious. I need to find some way to attach a motor to the potentiometer so that uh, when the motor spins, it turns the potentiometer. Uh, but then the next thing is I need to know where the potentiometer is currently set. And with a microcontroller, uh, it's fairly easy to read the current uh, position of a potentiometer, but the challenge comes in when uh, I need this potentiometer to also be able to hook up to some other circuit so that I can turn it and it, you know, functions as, like I said, a volume knob or something like that. So normally what you would do is just apply a known voltage from your microcontroller to the potentiometer and read what the voltage you're getting from the middle uh, terminal is and then basically the potentiometer is working as a voltage divider and based on the voltage you're reading at the middle You know what position you're at. So what I'm thinking I need to do is actually have this motor turn Two potentiometers at the same time one of them that's going to be hooked up to the circuit and that has nothing to do with uh, Any of that stuff about the voltage divider or anything like that and a second one uh, which is just for that voltage divider and uh, the microcontroller can always be reading the position on the second potentiometer and based on that we'll spin the motor it'll spin the potentiometer with the voltage divider until it's in its position and all three of these will actually be connected together so that'll also spin the potentiometer that's being used in the circuit i hope that makes sense and of course how do i know what value i need to send the motor in order to turn it the right direction and the right amount to get to the position i'm aiming for that's right a pid controller you think it was just a coincidence that i did a pid video right before I decided to work on this thing? Nope. Although arguably this is a much better example of where you would practically use PID uh, than the turret that I did last time, but whatever. So if you wanna get a full overview of what PID control is and how it works, I highly recommend that you watch my last video because I went pretty in depth in the theory of it. So I'm not gonna reiterate all that again. Hmm. That's kind of redundant because I only iterated it the first time. So I would just reiterate it this time. I wouldn't be reiterating it again. Except for the fact that I record like a thousand takes of everything I'm trying to record here, so I'm not going to reiterate it all again. So of course, before starting a project like this, it's probably a good idea to check online and see if there's anything commercially available that does what I just described doing. And uh, yeah, so it turns out that there actually are motorized potentiometers you can buy. And I think that they work exactly like I described. They have two potentiometers inside and one of them is used uh, for your circuit connections and the other one is just used for feedback control. So that's kind of validating, right? I came up with the same idea. Uh, the problem with these is that I just can't seem to find them in very many values or tapers. They're just very limited. So uh, I still think it's worth it to at least do a prototype and see if I could do this on my own. 
Oh, and by the way, this is just like the cheapest little hobby motor that you can buy. I think that you get these for like a couple bucks at the most on Amazon or something. I'm trying to keep the cost down and I'm trying to keep the size down since I've already got uh, all three of these components uh, taking the place of one. So we'll see how that works out. Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna go try to build this thing, I guess. You know, I figured I should give some kind of preview for what I have in mind for the mechanical design. And at least for the moment, I've overcome my laziness and I'm gonna use the whiteboard instead of drawing in Microsoft Paint this time. So I don't know, imagine this is like a top-down view of the design. Uh, so you're gonna have like a potentiometer. Uh, and you know, you're looking down at it. That's the knob and that's the, the base of it. Uh, and then we're gonna have the second one mounted in there somewhere. And then, uh, you know, somewhere over here, I'll mount the motor. That looks pretty good. And then basically what I wanna do is put in, how do I draw this? Gears? Oh my gosh. You know what, I don't really know how to draw a gear. All right, so there's gonna be gears. They're gonna be something like this. It's not great, but that's a gear. And then that's gonna be interlocked with a gear on this potentiometer. And those gears are gonna be a one-to-one -one ratio because they're trying to turn at the same speed. And then the motor, I think I'm just gonna put one more gear in. And this may or may not be a one-to-one -one ratio, but one more gear in on the motor. Okay, so look, I know this looks ridiculous, but what it is is this motor is gonna spin and this gear is gonna turn. That's gonna turn this gear over here which is connected to the first potentiometer. So it's gonna spin its knob and that's gonna also turn this motor and it's gonna spin its knob, okay? Or let's just say this is the potentiometer for the signal. You grab the knob on that, you turn it, it's gonna turn all the gears. I mean, it's gonna turn the motor, but that really doesn't matter. But see, it makes sense, right? All right, that's enough of this, okay? I'm just gonna go build it and then you can see it physically put together and then maybe it won't look ridiculous. You can disassemble the potentiometer by prying back the little tabs that hold the metal base on uh, and then you have access to the bottom of it which is where I'm planning to add a shaft to connect gears. Note that the base needs to be reinstalled the proper direction because it has this little tab that limits how far the potentiometer can spin. To connect the shaft, I just glued in a 10 tooth gear, um, which I'm not planning to use the teeth on this gear, but it's gonna fit a two millimeter shaft, which is the same size as all the other gears I'm using. And finally, now that something is protruding out of the bottom of the potentiometer, you have to drill a hole in the base to be able to fit it back together. This was surprisingly difficult because the metal of the base is just so thin that everything just wants to bend instead of cutting when you try to drill through it. So in the future, I might actually just grind that gear that I glued into the bottom of the potentiometer down so that the base will fit back on without needing modification. Since this is just a prototype, I'm just using an old beat up enclosure that I had lying around to mount everything just to see if it all works without spending any extra money. The quick and dirty way I used to position everything in the case was just to hold stuff where it needed to be, try to make a mark in that spot, and then uh, drill my holes and put it in. There's a little bit of leeway with the motor mount and the gears and stuff like that, so uh, it wasn't too difficult to get it all interlocked as it needs to be. All right, this is how it's all put together and how it's going to work. As you can see, I just have like screws sticking out of the sides. You know, if this were a real project, then you might not want to do that. So you may have noticed that there is a motor right here and there's a potentiometer down there at the bottom and there's another potentiometer over here on this side and all of these things are connected together uh, with gears. Just go ahead and stick this on here. Okay, so the idea is that this is the actual potentiometer that you would hook up to your circuit. Of course, in the end, you're gonna have the motor driving both of these potentiometers. But for now, I can just turn the knob to demonstrate that everything inside the box is connected. Uh, so they all turn together. So of course, I want these two potentiometers to turn at the exact same rate. So I connected them with equivalent gears. Both of those are uh, 42 tooth gears, I believe. And then also, I thought that this motor being basically the cheapest motor money can buy, might not be excellent at uh, stopping and starting exactly where you want it to go. So uh, just to try to filter that out a little bit, I used a much smaller gear, uh, which is a 10 tooth gear. So roughly it would take four revolutions of the motor to give one revolution on the potentiometers. 
Now you might also be wondering why is this potentiometer mounted so weirdly with this bracket on the side of the case. And the reason for that is that this shouldn't ever be used by the end user. Uh, you know, if you were building, I don't know, a stereo and this was the volume control, you wouldn't want to have two knobs sticking out for volume control. It, it's kind of ambiguous which one you're supposed to use, and then they also end up turning at the same time when you turn one of them. So to avoid that, I cut the little angle bracket here and mounted that one inside the box. I've gotten some comments on previous videos about how I should really invest in a 3D printer, and I don't think there's ever been a project I've worked on more than this one that tells me, yes, I really need to invest in a 3D printer because maybe I could have avoided all of this and gluing stuff together and aligning all this and just, you know, 3D printed one unit that you mount the motor and both potentiometers to and then uh, mount that whole thing to a box and you're done. But, you know, this is what I'm working with for now. Okay, well, it's the next day, and I hooked up a SparkFun H-Bridge driver thing uh, and a microcontroller so that I can uh, actually drive the motor. Uh, but then I discovered that, unfortunately, this cheap little hobby motor wasn't strong enough to drive the potentiometers. I don't know, if it can't move that, then it can't move anything. So, fortunately for me, I had a few of these slightly bigger cheap DC motors sitting around. And uh, I decided to hook this up instead, and it looks like this one is going to be able to do the job. Um, so that does mean that I can't use the little plastic clip that came with the first motor because it just doesn't fit. But I had that figured out already too. Thanks to me from several years ago, I have this uh, metal thing here that ah, I'm trying to remember. It came from Home Depot. I think it's like a clip for conduit or something like that but it's exactly the right size for these motors and it's got a little hole over here so I can mount it. And yeah, so I use that to mount the motor in here and um, let's see if I can get under here. Yeah, so it's all still connected as it was. And I wrote a simple little program that just turns the motor one way and then back the other way and it just does that on repeat. Um, so let me just plug in the battery. I'm using this rechargeable battery that I've used in several projects. This thing came with the airsoft gun I got for my turret projects, and it has been an awesome battery to have. But anyway, let me just connect that, and it should just resume the program wherever it was. That's pretty neat. It is actually working, and uh, let's take a look on the inside while it's going. As you can see, the second potentiometer is moving as well. Okay, I think I've got something worth showing at this point. The circuit, still the same as before. And I'm also capturing the screen so that I can show the serial monitor, which is currently printing out the value of the uh, potentiometer that's inside the box, uh, not the one connected to this knob here. But because they're both tied together, if I adjust this, it adjusts both of them. And you can get values from zero up to 1024, so 10 bits of resolution there. And the other thing about the serial connection here is that I can actually use this to uh, save a target position and command the potentiometer to go to that target position. So I just send the character S and that says save, send the character A and that says activate. Let's just set a value, I don't know, 578, that seems good enough. Send an S, now that value is saved. And what we'll do is just adjust it to a different position and we'll send an A. And it got pretty close, so it's not exact, and there's a reason for that. So let's give it one more attempt. Yeah, so I have run into a pretty big limitation with this thing, and that's just that the motor doesn't really have enough torque to turn both potentiometers when I set the PWM signal very low, uh, which would be, you know, a really slow or fine-tuned uh, amount of turning. I had to set a minimum PWM value to send, uh, which kind of undermines the purpose of the PID controller, which is supposed to be determining uh, what the PWM value is at all times. But because I have this minimum value in order to even make the motor turn, overshoot becomes pretty much inevitable because I'm telling the motor to turn faster than 
uh, the speed that the PID controller calculated, which is, you know, what would actually be getting me to my target value most efficiently. But I'm willing to live with that. And something else I added in here is a threshold uh, that I'm just saying, if I get to a value that is within, uh, you know, this much of the target value that I'm aiming for, then go ahead and stop. You know, I wanted a stop condition so that once the motor reaches the position that we're looking for, I can go in and, you know, manually turn the knob still. And so if we look inside of here once more, uh, if you recall, I said I was using a 10 tooth uh, gear for the motor and 42 teeth gears for the potentiometers. And that was a little bit arbitrary. I just chose 42 and 10 because I wanted the motor to, you know, not make a full revolution uh, for every revolution of the potentiometer. That seemed like it would be the way to go. And I'd say it turns out that my guess was pretty close because when I was experimenting, I ended up trying just um, connecting the shaft of the motor directly to the shaft of the potentiometer. And uh, that, you know, that makes it a one to one ratio instead of a four to one rush, roughly. And I just wanted to see how things would go. I don't know if maybe I would reach my target faster, but I was surprised to find that it really slowed the whole thing down. The knob rotated very slowly and uh, it was just the torque issue again. Uh, but because I didn't have this four to one uh, step down, the amount of torque required to rotate the potentiometers was four times greater for the motor and it could barely turn it even at its max speed and i also tried going the other way i don't even know how many teeth are on this gear but it's a lot and i tried sticking this thing on there too because then i thought well maybe i can get more precise movements if i put a larger gear in uh, but then the problem i ran into was actually that i couldn't turn it the other way when i tried to turn the actual potentiometer knob uh, the shaft was just slipping in the gear and you know that this knob was turning but the gear wasn't turning at all uh, because it was too much force at this point for uh, the potentiometers to you know turn each other plus turning the motor so i ended up going back to the 10 and 42 uh, ratio here and uh, it seems to be pretty much as good as i can get it with you know parts that i have laying around all right well uh that's that's pretty much it it does work uh, a couple things about it uh, if you decide to try to build this thing on your own, uh, be really careful when you take apart and reassemble your potentiometers because I definitely messed a couple of them up where it just seemed like the wiper, which is the part in the middle that is touching the resistive element, uh, was just occasionally losing contact and that was, you know, screwing up my readings. So just be really careful taking those apart and putting them back together that you don't uh, make the same mistake I did. And yeah, I mean, it was pretty cool. I mentioned in a previous video that uh, working with the mechanical stuff is uh, somewhat of a weak spot for me, so it was good to spend some more time doing that. And uh, I hope that whoever's watching this was able to learn something, and if you uh, come up with any improvements on my design, definitely let me know because it's it's certainly not without its downsides. But yeah, uh, like and subscribe and, you know, the whole thing and all that. And uh, yeah, I'll see you next time when uh, maybe I decide to put this design to use in a real circuit.